Have you ever wondered what Midjourney's chaos parameter does? Does it actually create chaos or does it just randomize things? Or maybe it's just more creative than other modes? And anyway, what values should you be using for it? All this and more in today's video. But before we get started, if you'd like to get updates on this channel, remember to hit the subscribe button under the screen. All right, so what exactly is the chaos parameter and why is it called chaos? Does it actually create chaos? Well, in fact, no, it doesn't. All the chaos parameter really does is it adds a element of randomization to the variations that you are creating with Midjourney. But what exactly does that mean? Well, the primary purpose is to make sure that whatever variations you're getting, um, if they are too close to each other, let's say you generate an image of a girl with, I don't know, red hair or something, and the results that you're getting are just too close to each other and the compositions are more, more or less all the same, um, you can use the chaos parameter to loosen that up a little and tell Midjourney that you'd like to see more varied results. So it's essentially just saying mix it up a little bit more. Very often this will lead to slightly more creative or artistic uh, image variations. However, that is not what chaos technically does. So there's a correlation between using the chaos parameter or high values for the chaos parameter and um, actually getting more artistic results, but there's no causal relationship really. So let me maybe give you some examples. And before we do, there's one thing I'd like to point out that the chaos parameter actually doesn't work all that well with uh, version four of mid journey. Uh, I don't know why exactly, but it seems that um, in version four, the differences that you get are so small or they're barely visible. Like I personally have not been able to really see a big difference. So what I'm gonna do right now first is I'm going to deactivate version four, which I had set up in my settings. And I'm going to go back to version three because this is where you see the biggest impact. All right, so now that I've switched to version three, uh, let's start off by creating an image of a red apple. And I'm just gonna use a regular prompt. I'm not gonna add any chaos parameter just because I'd like to show you what the default uh, results would look like. All right, so this is quite ironic. Uh, turns out there is currently a bug going on on Midjourney, so um, which is causing version three generations to not actually generate. And the only way to circumvent this issue right now is to use version four, which I clearly just stated is not as ideal for showing the differences between a low chaos value and a, and a, and a high chaos value. Nevertheless, we're going to do this now uh, because there's no point in waiting. And let me just quickly switch back to version four. But, and oh, now, now this, this is really ironic now. So <laughs> it seems that they fixed it now. Okay, listen, we're going to do, we're going to do both. I'm going to show you version four now first, and then we're going to have a look at whether version three still works. So first of all, let's try, I'm going to just do a uh, simple prompt, a blue country house. And this is going to be with version four, but I'm going to add, no, actually, I'm not going to add any, I am actually going to add chaos zero and chaos zero would usually mean that all of the results will be relatively similar to each other, right? So there's not going to be a lot of very variation in what you get. So let's see, um, we're going to wait a little bit. Let me speed up this process for you and I'll see you in a second. All right. So what you can see now is we're close to finishing this generation or at 78%. But what you can see is that it is creating literally a blue country house and the houses all look more or less similar to each other. Of course, there's slight differences, but the overall composition is similar. The house looks similar. The style, the mood and everything is fairly sim similar now. But let's go to the other extreme and say we want to generate a blue house 
sorry, a blue country house. And this time I'm going to add a chaos value of 100. So we're going to the complete other extreme. And what we're going to expect is I would expect to see four images that still contain a blue house. However, the interpretation of that prompt will be very different. So we should see four very different ways of creating a blue house in a landscape or whatever. We'll see. And some of these variations might be more creative than usual and others might be closer to what we already have here. So let's have a look. And again, I'm just going to speed up this generation process so we don't have to wait all the time. And here you go. So we're almost done again, but let me quickly show you uh, the intermediate results. And as you can see, oh wait, let me just see. Ah, there it's done. And what you can see is these are four completely different interpretations of a blue country house. They're very different in positioning and style in uh, lighting effects. And this is what the chaos parameter does. It introduces an element of randomness and, but the randomness is not, how should I describe this? The randomness is with, um, with relation to how different the results that you get in your variations will be. And you can control this. So let's say, uh, just for the sake, on sake, um, all intents and purposes, let's try to do a blue country house. And I'm going to add a chaos value of 50 this time, because what I want to show you now is how we slowly move from a set of variations, which are all very similar to each other to a set of variations which are completely different. And in the middle, at about 50, we should get something that's, well, roughly in the middle and fairly balanced. So let me try this. And I'm gonna speed this up again. All right, so here we go. We're close to finishing this one as well. And what we can see now is, oh, there we go. What we can see now is that yes, every single one of these image variations is quite different still. However, we're moving much closer to the original set of variations that we had. So um, this building looks quite a bit like this one. The There's a tree, here's a tree, there's some grass, there's some grass here. This one's still a bit out of whack, to be honest. Um, and, and, and so is this one. But what you can, I think you can start to see is that also, the color tone is closer in these images here than in these. And that's the point. So what exactly is the objective or the purpose of using the chaos parameter? Well, let's say you're experimenting with image generations. And then depending on what you put into your prompt, sometimes you'll get very, very uh, similar images. Even though you want to have something more different, you want to have more variation simply because you don't yet know whether this is the composition and the style that you're looking for. So it's um, if you're in a more explorative phase, then using a high chaos parameter can add more randomness into your results. But if you want to actually keep your results very close to each other, because you're looking for fine tuning, like small, tiny details, then you would use a very low chaos parameter to control, to rein in basically the, the AI. Um, this will not always be the same. So the, the way this behaves um, depends largely on the prompt that you're using, other parameters that you're using, there's certain modes. And, and I'll try to show you in a minute how it also looks very different between version four and version three. But um, the, the chaos parameter will allow you to make small adjustments to deviate from what Midjourney is doing um, and hopefully provide you something more useful, right? So let me see if we can switch back to version three. The only reason I want to do this real quick is because I do find that the difference is, there is quite a bit of a difference. Um, a red apple, and I'm gonna use chaos zero in this case. Let's see whether this works. I'm gonna speed this up again. All right, so I'm, I'm afraid it's not working. Um, this is mainly because it, the bug is not actually 
So I'm just going to quickly cancel this job. So the bug is not the fact that it's not working at all. However, it seems that generations are so extremely slow that it takes you easily between, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes. And the red apples that just suddenly popped up here, um, that was not because it was fixed. It was simply because, um, I guess, a half an hour had passed and the generation had finished. But to, to give you an idea of what would have happened with this, so this um, this is a regular red a red apple uh, prompt and which is fairly balanced if i had used a chaos pyramid of zero on this then it would have picked i don't know a certain style of red apple and then all four Im images would have looked very very close very very similar if i had then switched to chaos 100 you would have seen some crazy artistic variations here you would have seen maybe um I don't know, perhaps even a, a, a painting in a frame with an apple in it. Um, some some crazy interpretations on what a red apple might be. And this is a part of what makes Midjourney so interesting and exciting. Um, but, uh, you know, not every, it's not it's not for everybody. And it really depends on the situation that you're trying to use it in. So remember, the, the purpose of the chaos parameter is to either introduce or constrain the randomness and the variability of the results that you're being given in your variations that you're generating. Um, that's the purpose. Uh, and what tends to happen is that the results will be slightly more creative. However, chaos does not automatically mean that you'll get more creative images. So it's not an artistic uh, feature or anything like that. So uh, I hope you found that useful. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the full length of this video. If you found it useful and enjoyed it, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button. And if you'd like to get notified the next time I release a new video, remember to hit the subscribe button just under the screen. I'll see you next time and take care. Bye.